Hello there, Abundant Life Church friends and family. Thank you for joining me today on this beautiful day, August the 3rd, um, 2020. It is beautiful outside. I want to encourage you today to watch this in 11 in its entirety. I have a lot of things to say. Um, Today is a a day that I want to talk about Abundant Life. I want to talk about the great burden uh, that God has given um, us for His church. And um, I'm grateful for the church and the church family and all that are connected with it, those that are outside of it, those that watch um, online, those that are uh, attending weekly, those that are faithfully committed to small groups and prayer groups. Thank you so much for being a part of that. That is so important. I have a great burden for the church and, of course, a great burden for Abundant Life and and, uh, the church and our culture. And so I want to encourage you to watch this whole 11 because I'm going to be sharing a few things that I think are really crucial. I want to talk about, uh, first of all, the, the church as we see it today. And, you know, in 2019, the church was under tremendous decline back then. Um, th- uh, there were more than uh, 4,500 churches that closed in 2019, and 3,000 churches were started. The church has been on a big decline. Another study puts it that um, uh, published in April of 2020 estimated that in the decade ending in 2020 that 3,800 to 7,700 houses of worship closed per year in the United States. And that means, friends, 75 to 150 congregations a week stopped meeting. Now, sometimes uh, because in our modern age we have YouTube and we have all these things, we can look at it, you know, like worldwide ministries that are having preachers or teachers or, you know, whatever that um, that seem to symbolize the church. But at large, in terms of community outreach and connection with the culture, um, we, are, um, ha- are, are, we are seeing a huge downward trend. And of course, COVID hasn't really helped with that. And of course, that makes me tremendous, uh, tremendously sad because the, the next generation will not have a significant connection with church and there are some churches that are doing a great job with that and and they have young people that um, are leaders in different ways and and we have some uh, young people of our own and I'm so proud of them for um, being a part and significant uh, part of the church they are not just the church of tomorrow they're the church of today if we don't see more young people and more young families in the church we've lost and that's one statistic I read said that um, those born after uh, 1989 Eighty up to eighty percent of them have never even been in church. That means in twenty years, there's going to be a huge group of people that have never even been in church. It's um, different for America now. That's not unique. Uh, the Seattle area is really strange that way. I mean, uh, we have a we're like Nineveh. We have a city of about that they were about six hundred thousand. I think Seattle's about six hundred fifty thousand just in Seattle. And um, it, we have, they have no children. There's, there, there's only one city in the United States that has fewer children than Seattle, and that's San Francisco. Um, there's more dogs in Seattle than there are children. Um, but why has God put the church here? The church is God's purpose, really, to reach the world and to, to grow together in faith and to encourage other believers. And to see it decline, and especially during these times of COVID where so many churches are closing, small churches, large churches are reportedly uh, only up to 40% of what they were before COVID as far as people that are attending. And we have a lot of people online and I'm grateful for that. In fact, I've heard that um, that uh, our biggest givers are people that give online. Um, that Some of them don't even attend the church and, and that's that's amazing, and I'm grateful for those, and, and they're helping to support what we're doing and things like this. And so today's 11 is a little unique that way. I, I want to talk to us about our calling. First of all, uh, but not most importantly, God has called us because of the wickedness of our culture. Um, just like God called Jonah in, in Jonah chapter 1, you know, he, he said, go to Nineveh um, and, and tell them what's coming. And uh, Jonah didn't want to, of course, you know the story. But yet God's call was to go and be a light in a world that was filled with darkness and things that were very opposite and antithetical toward the ways that God has in mind or the peace and the joy and the fulfillment in life that he gives and the way of life he calls us to and uh, the salvation he offers that is not like this world. And so 
God has called us because of the wickedness of the culture. God calls us as well. Another reason is because of our tendency toward complacency. The church pulls us out of that complacency. And the church is a place where God uh, puts people together to accomplish great things for him, to grow together, to worship together, to pray together, to talk about life together, to share the word of God together. Um, all of these things are vital and they're very important. These are things that typify our Wednesday night and our Sundays as well. On Wednesdays we gather together, we have some food, we have some worship and we pray and we focus on prayer. Um, God calls us out of complacency. We can get lazy. COVID is, uh, kind of been a breeding ground for that and jesus says in matthew 24 11 he says many false prophets will come and cause many to believe lies and there will be more and more evil in the world so most people will be showing up uh they will stop he says showing their love for each other in verse 12 and verse 13 he says but those who keep their faith will be saved will, will uh, until the end will be saved what a a great admonition from the Lord that Jesus says right here that in the last days there's going to be people that will be drawing away and they'll be pulled away. There will be a great falling away before the return of the Lord. And so, and, and this, what we're seeing right now certainly fits those characteristics and Bill, I'm not trying to put this in any prophetic timeline, but it certainly is characteristic of prophecy that where we are today is a place of great complacency where people have stopped assembling or stopped meeting together and, it's very difficult. I think as a small church, I'm just going to share these things. One of the things that's really difficult um, for me as the pastor, of course, it, I think is um, seeing so few people gather. Not only because, and not because I, I need a great large crowd to preach to, uh, although not unwelcomed. I would say that the reason that it is so crushing to the church is because it doesn't fuel as much encouragement in the believers that are faithful and committed um, and that are, are you know, pressing through and, and being connected. That's great and Satan's great tragedy, right? To take the church away, to dismantle it from meeting together and to sharing the joy together and the love. It doesn't matter if the preacher preached a, you know, a bat at a thousand that, that Sunday or if he preach to stinker. <laughs> it happens both ways, I guess. Um, hopefully not too much of abundant life, but it does. Um, but the, there, we're connected and we're faithfully being a part of it. One of the things of complacency in our generation is being able to sit at home and just and watch YouTube after YouTube after YouTube. And of course, I'm grateful for that in the sense that the message is getting out to potentially people that are watching everything, you know, out there. And there's some that are. Jesus says right here in Matthew 24 that, hey, there will be people that will believe lies. Of course, the biggest reason that God calls us is because of his grace. He calls us at, to his church because of his grace. So if, if we go back to the account of Noah, um, Noah is called to go. And he decides, like many of us as well have decided, he goes and he takes a vacation in Spain. You know, he wants to go that way rather than to deal with with the issue or God's calling. And it's easy for us to push God's calling aside. I know many that have been involved in ministry in a great deal or a great number of ways. And then for some reason, they, they just pull away. I don't know if it's because we get older and maybe we feel like the next generation should rise up and take the mantle. And, and I hope that they do. We have to see that. But we can't stop doing what we do. We can't stop being committed to what God's called us to be committed to. And God, Satan's great strategy is to destroy the church, to cause disunity, to create confusion. And this modern age, I believe, is a fulfillment of prophecy where because of the increase of knowledge, many uh, will, many's love will grow cold. They'll fall away from the Lord. And there's so much knowledge out there. It doesn't have to be true. Most of it's not true, in fact. But knowledge now is at our fingertips. And especially in the last 20 years, the cell phone, smartphone explosion has, has created a, a significant increase in the, the access to knowledge. And so as we see the approach of the Lord drawing near, we've got to recognize, friends, that these are indicators that Jesus is returning. And God calls us because of his grace. 
Jonah was sent to Nineveh because the culture was wicked, because there were people that were far from God. And, um, you know, abundant life is no different. You and I have friends and family that are really close to here. And some of them aren't, but some of them are. We have neighbors and people that are caught up in this world of information and maybe they don't like this or they don't like that. And that's, that's just the way culture is. We've, we've learned to feed all of our own appetites without any need for a diet, <laughs> that's for sure. However, I believe that just as there's a great downturn in the culture, there's also a great opportunity for the church like never before. And great, Satan's great strategy, once again, to dismantle the church begins at its very core, its very heart, and that is to keep it from praying together, to keep us from seeking God and pressing in. I don't care how much talent I have. I don't care how much um, talent we can put on display through our pastors and our people, our, our leaders in the church that do everything from um, create things to sing, to minister the word of God. Um, however we might look on the outside or be able to communicate in different ways. Really, nothing holds a candle to us, the church being united in prayer. And, you know, I, I was thinking about that today. I was reading Hosea this morning, chapter 14. And it's, it's a great call to this very thing. And look at what he says. He says, return, Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. And I would say that our complacency has been our downfall. Our, uh, we fail to recognize the depth of God's grace. That's been our downfall. Um, and we fail to, to be together. And uh, we've kind of rejected that. We've said that the church's role, or I've done my part, or I can't tell you how many times I've considered, you know, I need to let a younger person just do this. I'm getting too old. I'm aging out. I'm not communicating the right way. I've got to be honest, these are the feelings I have. And, and one, sometimes the smallest thing can make me just, I just want to throw in the towel. And thank God for Pam, right? <laughs> you, you have no idea. The ministry of Pam is, is great in abundant life. But he says, your sins have been your downfall. And he says, return to the Lord. He says, take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, in other words, come to God in prayer. Come to the Lord and say, forgive all of our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips, worship. You know, we minimize maybe some of these things, but the purpose of the church is to get together, to seek God, to hear his word, just as everything that just is being said here, and to worship him. In that, if we can capture that and do that well, you know, friends, God really takes care of the rest. We're not called to make believers, we're called to make disciples. And when we begin to do that well and seek him and and create an atmosphere, an abundant life that's filled with life and love for God. That's a very contagious and compelling element to God's church. So that's really my heart for the church. There's so many things that I I have concern for her right now. And I I praise God that I that that people are giving. I mean, I see the giving there. I just I think we need to see the people there too. We need to see you in church. We need to see uh, friends and family in church. We need our witness to be, ex, ex, you know, out there. And so um, I hope and pray this challenges you today. And the place the church is at is, is very significant. Um, it seems like most of my time these days is being consumed with working on this old building. And I'm, you know, I'm a little weary of that, to be honest. Um, but if I can get one challenge to us across, it is this. We need to pray together. We need to seek God together and genuinely ask him for his blessing and his touch in one of the strangest times this generation has ever seen. But out of that, friends, is gonna birth great uh, pressing forward for outreach and new ideas and fresh things to impact our city and our world that, that we haven't thought of before. It's time to rise up and to take those things by the horns. We've got to communicate um, that people are loved and they are loved by God's church. People in this community are loved and the Lord's going to direct us in how to say those things well. So consider these things. God calls us to his grace. He calls us to this generation because 
Uh, there's such wickedness here, and he calls us out of our complacency into a life really of, of radical obedience to the cross of Christ, and not just our own appetites or wants or desires. It's no time to be retired. You can never retire from the ministry or the work that God's called you to do. And you can never retire from his church. That's just not a biblical idea. I can't escape it. Um, I want to pray today for you. God bless you. Lord, bless your people. I pray, God, as we begin to cooperate together in unity and to prayer, that you will continue to raise up people and ideas and ways to reach a generation that's far from you. Bless each person in this personal mandate as well, that they would be fulfilling uh, the call that you've given to each one of them, all of us, together as his church. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen. God bless you, friends. Have a blessed day.